What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of your weekly roundup. This is your host with the most, Mr. Francis da Costa, and I'd like to apologize once again. Um, I'm about a week late for my third video. I think I should co- turn these into a bi weekly um, roundup show. Um, but yeah, guys, it's been a hectic week. Um, everyone knows the current situation around the world and my own personal stuff going on. So please forgive me in that sense. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it, okay? So wanted to start off with the first topic of the week um, or the weekly roundup and that is the free PlayStation Plus games for March. Just a reminder to you all PlayStation Plus subscribers, the free PlayStation Plus games for March are Shadow of the Colossus Remake and Sonic Forces. So I have plenty of time for you guys to download these games and a neat trick for those of you who don't know. You don't have to actually download these games immediately as long as you choose the add to library option the games will be stored onto your account and available for you to download anytime you want as long as you're an active playstation plus subscribers Uh, but anyway onto the yummy stuff now playstation and xbox officially unveil their system specs so ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting week. Um, can I even say interesting? I think I should say thought-provoking week. Thank you, Thesaurus. Um, so on Monday, Xbox decides to have a blowout and show uh, and shows the model of the Xbox Series X, the inside of the console, letting certain media journalists such as Digital Founder and Austin Evans even put it together. And in the midst of all this, they even decide to drop the official spec sheet for the Xbox Series X. Then like the ninja they are, Sony PlayStation drops a tweet saying that they'll be doing a broadcast on Wednesday on the road to the PlayStation 5. Come Wednesday, Sony gives us a deep dive into the PlayStation 5 and its inner workings. Much respect to Jim Ryan and Mark Sony who reminded everyone watching that this presentation was for the now cancelled GDC and was meant for developers to have a deeper understanding into the feature set of the PlayStation 5 and what it will offer. So now it's official. Both parties have released their next-gen console specifications, so let's do a deep dive into these numbers. So the PS5 and the Xbox Series X both use the same Zen 2 CPU with 8 cores. However, the difference comes in the clock frequency with the PS5 um, running at 3.5 GHz and the Xbox Series X running at 3.8 GHz and 3.6 GHz with the multi-threading enabled. So I'm assuming for the PS5, the 3.5 GHz is probably for the multi-threaded as well. Now the difference is here um, when you get to the GPU, the PS5 is running a 10.28 teraflops GPU with 36 compute units running at 2.23 gigahertz as well with variable frequency. Whereas the GPU on the Xbox Series X is a 12 teraflop GPU with 52 um, compute units running at 1.825 gigahertz. Um, so as you can see, the PS5 is at 10.28 teraflops whereas the Xbox Series X is at the 12 teraflops. But we'll get back to this teraflop number in a bit. Memory, the PS5 is running a 16 gigabyte GDDR6 memory on a 256 um, bit bus, whereas the memory bus on the Xbox Series X is a 320 bit bus, also on the 16 gigabyte GDDR6. However, with the Xbox Series X, things are a bit different. So they have 10 gigabytes allocated Um, for games running at 560 gigabytes per second whereas the other six gigabytes um, allocated to the OS and the CPU is running at 336 gigabytes per second whereas the memory bandwidth on the PS5 however is a constant or unified 448 gigabytes per second when we jump to the storage however this is where things get different as well so xbox series hex has an internal storage um, which utilizes a one terabyte custom nvme ssd which has io throughputs of 2.4 gigabytes per second raw and 4.8 gigabytes per second compressed whereas with the playstation 5 they have a custom 825 gigabyte ssd with io throughputs of 5.5 gigabytes per second raw and 8 to 9 gigabytes per second compressed yeah so as you can see the ssd is very fast in the ps5 
The PS5 also includes expendable third-party storage, which is an NVMe slot for that. However, there are a few caveats that come along with this. So one being that SSD or the NVMe SSD that you do insert needs to match or exceed Sony's um, current NVMe in the system. So it needs to be a 5.5 gigabytes per second SSD or higher. Whereas with the Xbox Series X, it's proprietary SSD um, memory card expansion thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's one terabyte expansion card works exactly like the internal storage on the Xbox Series X. The only messed up part is that it's proprietary. Both of them you, um, support external storage support um, via USB hard drives and so on, so forth. And both of them also do have same 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray optical drive. So when it comes to these consoles, just from the spec sheets alone, you can see that the big differences are in the GPU and the SSD. Whereas the Xbox Series X has the more brute force GPU and the PS5 has the much faster SSD. Now before I jump into the whole teraflop difference between the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, first we all need to agree that teraflops ain't I repeat, teraflops ain't in the world of gaming. You ain't shit. You just like your daddy. You don't do shit, and you never gonna amount to shit. All you ever do around here is eat, sleep, and shit. Look at this place. Way y'all act, y'all must think I'm the maid. And if you'd like to debate the topic with me, please leave your argument in the comments section below. But first, let me explain why I say what I say, okay? Why do we play games? Don't answer that rhetorical question. Because they are fun, obviously. It doesn't matter how many teraflops you throw at a game. If it's not fun, it's whack. It sucks. It's boring. Get it out of here. Just look at Nintendo, who are basically riding this notion hard. Their current consoles offer basically one teraflop of compute performance and yet it's an amazing console hybrid that's doing its own thing. And it even has surpassed Xbox One sales. Why? Because its series of games, especially first party offerings, are fun. Nintendo is not too concerned about pushing pixels and the compute performance required to push 4K and 8K and beyond. They are concerned about delivering fun experiences and that's it. It's the same reason why so many indie games offer offer much more in terms of fun than some triple a games out there <coughs> anthem <coughs> looking at you <laughs> if the game is fun then it doesn't matter how many teraflops you have the experience will be worthwhile and that's what sony knows yes they want to give you a console that's 4k standard at 60 frames per second and beyond but most importantly they want to give you a console that is fun a console that allows developers the freedom to make their games and express their fun with engaging stories gameplay and amazing visuals but also a console that is consumer conscious and understands that there needs to be a balance between power and price you want to learn how to punch better learn balance balance is key balance good karate good Everything good. Balance bad. Better pack up go home. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I personally am happy with the amazing specs PS5 has to offer, and I can't wait to get my hands on one. So yes, back to the teraflop discussion. Xbox Series X has 12.15 teraflops. PS5 has 10.28 teraflops, a difference of 1.8 teraflops. Uh, same thing seen with the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Also about a difference of 1.8 teraflops. But personally, I don't think that's enough to warrant any type of concern. Especially seeing how the PS4 Pro has been performing and has amazing games coming out for it like The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. So the PlayStation 5 is going to be a beast. Um, this teraflop number does not concern me at all and if you're a real gamer it shouldn't concern you either PlayStation has the best games PS5 is going to be a beast let's put it at that so on to the next topic PS5 backwards compatibility 
Now, during the Road to the PS5 stream, Mark Sony did mention that the PlayStation 5 would be compatible with the top 100 PS4 games. And that tickled people the wrong way. And I understand why, because it kind of tickled me the wrong way too. They stop! They for real stop! I said stop! I said stop! You play too damn much! But he later did clarify that the majority of PS4 games will run on the PS5 come launch day. Phew. Yo. Uh, that, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad about that. Because like if it's, when he said the top 100 only, uh, I was losing it for a moment. Um, and the great thing is that, that they are reviewing performance of each game to ensure there aren't any issues. So that's great. So you know that the moment the PS5 launches, the majority of PS4 games you have will probably run 100% on the PS5. But not only that, some games will actually benefit from the extra horsepower the PS5 has to push better frame rates, frame rates and resolutions. So all in all, PS5 backward compatibility is a plus for me. Um, no word on PS3, PS2, and PS1 backward compatibility. Um, if they do ever do that, it's probably not baked into the system. It's probably through some emulation um, software. So um, PS5 backward compatibility, I'm happy with the PS4 backward compatibility. Even if that's the only backward compatibility, I won't lie. I don't have my PS2 and PS3 games anymore, so I'm okay with that. Lastly, Sony slowing down PlayStation Network in Europe and the United States. So Sony has started to slow down their PlayStation Network, specifically download speeds because of the extra strain on the internet now that everyone is social distancing and spending more time at home and online. This is done in order to reduce the stress on the network. Sony is just one in a myriad of companies that have started doing this with Netflix reporting earlier in the month that they would reduce streaming quality to ease internet capacity as more people begin working from home on the plus side the slowdown is only for downloads and won't affect the gameplay of online titles such as fortnite or the recently released call of duty warzone and that's a wrap from your host with the most eating toast mr francis da costa thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of the weekly roundup much appreciated if you like what you heard and what you've seen please hit the like and subscribe button don't forget to hit the notification bell to get up-to-date releases from me and that's it everyone have a great day further and see you on the next one peace